You know me. Anything for an audience. <laughs> yeah, but it's supposed to be the audience that's captive, not the performer. <laughs> uh, I think it's more like anything to get out of early stages of labor. Oh, yeah? Well, right. if I was really smart, I would have knocked myself unconscious during the last stages of labor, huh? <laughs> oh, now tell me about it. You know, when Jean was born, I, there was this little... You know, Miriam, I understand that you had some exciting things happen to you yesterday. Jean, I was talking. I know, that's all I did. My mind was changing the subject. Now, this labor here is bad enough, and I don't care to hear about anyone else's. Oh, you stop it. <laughs> no, no, what's the excitement? Oh, it's nothing, really. Oh, nothing, huh? That's about as nervous as I've ever been, I'll tell you. Uh, Babs, now, hold on. You make it sound as if we were being held at gunpoint or something. <laughs> all it was is we had a visit from the social worker who was uh -huh. doing the home study for the custody case, yeah. and that was oh. all. Yeah. Are you going to tell me now that uh, you weren't nervous? Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, of course I was, but I was also praying almost the whole time, and I know that God is really going to honor that. <laughs> uh, you people aren't the O'Caseys, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, this is 402, mm -hmm. and you're in labor. Do you have a history of uh, cardiac problems? I definitely have the wrong patient then, excuse me. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I think I know you. Aren't you the man that was at the carpenter's house the other day? Carla, are you sure? I think so. Hold on a minute. Oh, what business do you have with Charles Carpenter? What business do you have in knowing? Oh, plenty. I work for the Chronicle, and Mr. Carpenter's state of health happens to be very pertinent to a current legal proceeding. We think he's hiding something. Even if that were true, it wouldn't concern me. Excuse me, I have a patient to see. So we going. hold on, Babs. Hold on now. We don't want to blow this thing. Mrs. Davidson? Dr. Johnston. Okay, now once you have those totals, you have to check them against the totals of the previous shift. Okay? Yes? Charles, Wynn Johnston here. I want to see you right away. I just heard a very interesting accusation leveled at you, and I want to know if it's true. Is he still on the phone? Yeah. Well, don't let him see you looking, Babs. Uh, Jane, will you Shh, stop? Mom. Don't you shush me, Jean. I don't know whether or not you noticed what your wife over there is. She's in the process of having a baby. You should be at her side and not at the door playing James Bond. Carla, are you all right, babe? No, she's not. No, it's, it's better. It's better now. No thanks to you. Listen, I'm sorry, but this whole thing is unexpected. Now, there's a good chance that we may be able to crack this thing open. Hey, he's hanging up. Is he leaving? Jane! No, no, he's talking to Mrs. Davidson. Okay, now does everyone know what to do? Yeah, I'm gonna call Harold. You tell him to get over here right away. And I'll follow him. Babs, use discretion now. <laughs> Jane, will you think about your wife and child? Listen. That's all right, Mom. I mean, this is important, too. Yeah. Listen, uh, Babs, now when he leaves, I want you to be very careful. Yeah. Miriam? Yeah. Miriam. Now, you let Harold make all the inquiries about who this guy is when he gets over here, okay? Okay. I'd like to help you guys, but oh, I... Oh, he's leaving. He's leaving. Okay, all right. Any questions? No, no, no. We'll be fine. Okay, fine. come on. Come on. Come on. Get this okay. get out of here. Okay. Such goings on. You know, Mom, it is pretty obvious that this guy is a doctor, and if our suspicions are right, then that could mean... Miriam would get custody of Eric again. Baby, how long was that last contraction you had? 20 seconds or so. And how long ago since the last one? 20 minutes. Oh. 
You know, I, I know this is supposed to mean something. What exactly, I don't know. Oh, it means you got 10 minutes to get back to the office, uh -huh. 15 minutes to finish that story that McGovern's ins insisting on, and then 10 minutes to get back here. Well, I'm not even going to comment on how I feel about that well, situation. Well, believe me, Mom, I feel the same way, but there is no talking McGovern out of this thing. Yeah, well, I understand, but just hurry up and leave. Baby. Because the sooner you do, means the sooner you'll get back here. All right, all right. Love you. I love you, too. Mom, you take care of her, all right? I will, sweetheart. Okay. See you guys. Oh, Carla. You know, when I found you lying on the floor, uh, I prayed. I asked God to take care of you, and, uh, well, uh, I guess he was listening to me, huh? Will you say something? I don't want this unresolved when Dave gets here. Lori, this isn't something that can be resolved simply because you want it resolved. You just don't want to deal with hey, it. Hey, let's just drop it, okay? No. No, I don't like you being this angry. Listen, I have every right to be this angry. If Nancy Sue, she could take everything away from us, Lori. Everything. Now, don't tell me that doesn't bother you. Yeah. Yeah, it bothers me. And it makes me angry. But I am mad at her actions. And right now, I honestly feel like you hate Nancy. I'm not so sure that I don't. You know, you're not being realistic. You're going around wasting all of your energy trying to get a human response from someone who is incapable of giving you one. You're not going to get it from her. So what am I supposed to do? Resign myself to letting her walk away with our lives? No. No. You're supposed to remember that you enabled her to walk away with hers. Then no matter what happens, nothing will ever take away from the good that you've done. I'm sorry, but the prospect of losing my life's work takes a lot away from it. That'll be fine, then. Three o'clock. Thank you. They're picking up all that medical equipment later on today. Good riddance. Mr. Carpenter, I hate to second-guess you, but I'm concerned. You've been out of bed for less than one day, and you're sending back all that medical Believe equipment. Believe me, Mrs. Lucas. When I wake up and don't find all those wires and the metal boxes, it'll do wonders for me. Would you please make one concession and leave the oxygen tank in the house? No, nothing. Very well, then. Uh, Mrs. Lucas, uh, I'm expecting uh, Dr. Wynne Johnston. Would you please bring us some, uh, some coffee and those coffee cakes that I like when he arrives? Yes. You know, I'm really not looking forward to this. Aside from yourself and Dan Myers, he's the only other person who knows that I've had a heart attack. But judging from the way he was talking on the telephone earlier, I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep that up much longer. Well, may I ask what he said? Well, he clearly indicated that... Uh, he was aware of the fact that my health was involved in a legal matter. Oh, dear. Yes, it's my fault. I should have anticipated it and, and offered him something in exchange for his discretion. But you don't know that he hasn't been discreet. No, 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 but there's something going on there. It's been my experience that doctors hold the confidence of their patients the same way lawyers hold that of their clients. I know what you mean, Mrs. Lucas, but uh, the problem here is that Wynn didn't know that he was uh, keeping in confidence. In fact, I was rather abrupt with him throughout the whole incident. He has every reason not to be quiet, and he also made it very clear that treating me here at home was much against his better judgment. So that if anybody starts to question him on it, uh... You'll just have to believe that he won't say anything. No, no, no. I've got to make very sure that he knows that it'll be profitable if he maintains his silence instead of talking. I just need a little bit of time before that judge hands down his decision. I've got to concentrate all my efforts on buying that time from Wynne Johnston or, or, or anyone else who stands in my way. Thank 
favorite rivalry. Stacy Phillips, newsroom. Hello? Mom, is that you? Yes. You forgot my voice already? I, I can't believe you're calling me. Where are you calling from? Uh, my living room. Stacy, I need to talk to you. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. I'm, I'm safe. There's been no accident or anything of that sort. Well, what happened? Come over after work and uh, I'll try to explain. I, I really can't discuss it on the phone. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, as soon as I get off work, are you sure everything is all right? We'll talk, Stacy. Goodbye. Hey there. You okay, lady? Yeah, um... My mother just called. She's already back from her honeymoon. Oh, I see. Well, why did she come back so soon? She didn't say. Where is he? He left the hospital. No. No, don't worry about it, though, because Babs is right behind him, and she promised she would call the minute she finds out anything. Okay, just back up to the beginning and tell me everything. In the rush, I'm not sure what's fact and what's suspicion. Okay, well, first of all, all of us were in Carla's room. Carla's room? Well, yeah, she's gone into labor. That's wonderful. Well, sort of. Now, listen, this man walked in by mistake, and Carla recognized him as the same stranger that she saw over to Daddy's house the day Eric had run away. Is she sure? I mean, being in labor and everything, I'd think she'd be thinking about the baby. Yeah, Harold, she is sure. And you think he's a doctor? Yes, because he said something about having to see a woman who was in labor, who had a history of heart trouble. We were right, Miriam. Charles did have a heart attack. I know, I know. It looks that way. Now, now listen, Gene wants you to confront him, but since the doctor's already left... There, yeah, we can at least find out who he is. All right, so Ms. Davidson. Well, hi, Harold. Uh, look, I wonder if you could do me a favor. Terry, I think you were talking to him. Talking to who? Oh, about a half an hour ago, um, a doctor, or at least someone we we're hoping was a doctor, came out here, made a phone call, and then afterwards talked with you, and then he left. Uh, do you remember he was, uh, I'd say, about this tall, silver, white hair, real oh, Dr. Johnston. Who is he? Uh, Wynn Johnston, with a T. He's a cardiologist. He was here to see Mrs. O'Casey, but I don't O'Casey, think... O'Casey, that is, that's it. That's the name of the patient that he mentioned. What's going on? It's a little complicated to tell you about right now, Ms. Davidson, but uh, you've been a big help. Uh, Terry, uh, did you happen to overhear any of his telephone conversation? No, but afterwards he asked me to call the cardiology resident and ask him to see uh, Mrs. O'Casey. Uh, he said he had some business to attend to. Well, I'd give you just three guesses with whom. Your father. Yeah, now listen, it all makes really a lot of sense because he saw me in there. Plus, Jean really was quite direct with him. This has something to do with your father? Yes, well, Carla is just positive that this Dr. Johnston is the same strange man that she saw over to Daddy's house Which that day. confirms our suspicions about his health. But when Johnston isn't his cardiologist. Mrs. Davidson? Yes, I'm sorry to bother you, but I have a woman who absolutely insists she'd be put through to Mrs. Redland's room. I've told her we don't have any phones in delivery, oh, but, but that might be, might be Babs. You're right. Yeah. Uh, may I? Oh, yes, go ahead. Thank you. Babs? Harold. Yeah, where are you? Oh, boy, are those people crabby or what? Babs. Do you know how hard it is to find a phone booth in this neighborhood? What neighborhood are you in? Uh, Charles Carpenter's neighborhood. Boy, Harold, we have hit the jackpot. Didn't Miriam fill you in on the details? Well, yes, she did. And guess who drove over here with M.D. on his license plates? His name is Dr. Johnston. Now, is he with Charles right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, he went inside. I, I haven't seen Carpenter yet, but uh, the old prune opened the door and let him in. I'm sure he's in there, though. Okay, uh, Babs, now listen real carefully. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, Miriam and I are going to be over there in just a few minutes, but I want you to go back to the house and keep an eye on things, but don't let anybody see you. Okay, okay, uh, what do you want me to do if he leaves? You want me to follow him? No. No, no, we know who he is. We can see him at his office later if we have to. Just be discreet. <laughs> Are you kidding? Discreet is my middle name. Okay, bye. Bye. We got him. Mayor, tell me, what kind of a man is this uh, Dr. Johnston? Well, not the kind of man to be involved in anything you're suggesting. Is he not Charles' regular doctor? No. Miriam? No, he isn't. Good. Good, that fits the pattern perfectly. You've been a great big help. Uh, Miriam, come on, let's go. Okay.
So, where's little Scotty? Well, he's sleeping, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, Dave, he's so wonderful. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I hear, wonderful but noisy. Yeah, well, I think it's about time for lunchtime. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Listen, uh, could you try and cheer Ben up a little bit? What's the problem? He's mad at the world. Hi. Well, I guess that about says it. I'll talk to you later. Terry told me about the malpractice suit. Yeah, exciting, huh? Yes, and everybody else told me about the scene in uh, Nancy's room. Boy, when I make the hospital gossip vine, I make it in a big way. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. Ben, in view of everything that's happened, how do you feel about saving Nancy's life now? You really know how to ask them, don't you? Uh, generally. If you think that's tough, how about this? Do you think God is sorry you did? of writing, Redland. As usual. Hey, Gil. Hi. Uh, is Stacy around? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, look, I know you want to, uh, protect her. That's good. But I really do need to talk to her. Along the lines of that stuff you told her the other day at the wedding? Yes, the, uh, same subject. Isn't that a little cruel, Gil? Look, I don't know what Stacy told you, but I don't it's think it's... what she hasn't been telling me that's important. It's the way that she's been walking around here after that little rendezvous that you guys had, and it's her keep taking that picture of yours out and putting it on the desk again. And her rosy little prediction of the future. I think it's pretty sad, man. I think it's sad because I can read between the lines, and what I read doesn't support the way she's been acting around here. It shouldn't. So what are you going to do about it? I'm about to make her very unhappy. Gil! What's going on, Charles? Oh, hello, Wynn. Please, sit down. Why was I put on the defensive by people I don't even know? Oh, come on now. Your skin's a lot thicker than that. My skin is very thin when the practice of medicine mixes with the practice of law. Now, what was that reporter talking about? Why was it necessary for you to hide your heart attack? Oh, my heart attack isn't an issue here. Besides, it's over, finished, really. If you don't tell me, Charles, I'm going back there and ask that man myself. And I'm going to tell him the truth. All right, all right, sit down and I'll explain it to you. Now, when I'm trying to get custody of my grandson, now, although my health shouldn't be an issue, the opposition in desperation is making it one. I claim only a superficial knowledge of the law, but it seems to me that your health would be a valid point in deciding something as crucial as custody. Well, if you just so aptly have described it, your knowledge of legal matters is minimal. My health is really not at issue at all. When what I'm trying to do is rescue my grandson from the kind of life my daughter is forcing him into living. Now, what I'm really talking about here is child abuse, Wynn. And your silence will play a major role in saving the life of a child. I see. Well, what am I supposed to say if they question me directly? <clears throat> it's that Farley woman, that horrible woman that works for Mr. Webster. What? I saw her, I thought I saw her around the back just a minute ago. Oh, excuse me, when. Oh, Miss Farley, what are you doing here? Oh, I, uh, I guess you didn't hear me ring the doorbell, huh? No, I certainly did not. Please. Well, I repeat, what are you doing here? Oh, that's my line, isn't it? I mean, you're the one that's trying to pull a fast one here. I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Oh, really? Dr. Straight Arrow, I presume? Does that refresh your memory? Don't worry, we all know about it now. And pretty soon, the judge will, too. Oh, thanks. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I knew.
knew you'd come. So, you know why I'm here? Yes, but it wasn't necessary. Why not? Because what you said at the wedding was more than enough. Stacy. No, it's um... my turn now. I love you too, Gil. I didn't want to. But when I realized how you felt, I couldn't pretend. Stacy, it's... I, I know, I know. This is awkward. And I know we can't do this again for a while, but that's all right. I'm waiting. And I'll wait for as long as it takes you to break away gracefully from Amber. Though she'd never believe it, I, I don't want to see her get hurt. What I'm saying is... I understand, and I'll be here, and I love you. You get out of this newsroom before I throw you out. I didn't mean for that to happen. It didn't seem to me that you did anything to stop it. She wouldn't listen to me. You follow her, and you make her listen to you. Now, you're not doing her any great favor by putting this thing off. It might hurt her if she hears it now, but it's going to be a lot worse if she hears it later. 